Hello friends. I had a previous video where I uh, showed how we can make a skybox uh, in Unity uh, using a pre-rendered um, cube map and uh, I just wanted to follow up with that because I found a few things that were really cool. So uh, first of all the post-processing stack uh, is new obviously with the uh, new version of Unity and the legacy sun shaft effect was uh, in the in the old asset um, uh, uh, additional effects obviously uh, we don't have that I think you can still use it um, to, to an effect uh, but for some reason uh, there is no sun shaft effect in the new post processing stack and I tend to try and use whatever unity the new stuff that they come out with um, and I did see a thread when I was searching for, you know, where, what do we do now if we're not supposed to use, um, that other one, or if it's, uh, kind of, uh, deprecated or whatnot, an old version, what are we supposed to do with sun shafts? So, uh, I saw that the volumetric fog, uh, was used in, uh, kind of place for that, which I, I wanted to get an effect kind of like this obviously you know typical sun shaft I'm doing a forest that uh, redwood forest that is kind of misty and and all that so um, to get that effect I saw that you can use um, use the volumetric effect uh, from uh, unity created uh, volumetric fog uh, used with Atom, uh, and that is on GitHub now. It's free, and it's a project on GitHub right now, but it comes as a kind of built-in, a uh, pre-built project that has kind of all the assets to create uh, so that's this one I saw this is this is pretty much exactly what I'm looking for is these sun shafts um, So I don't, I don't know about performance runtime wise because I'm making a cube map I'm just kind of trying to render out of unity uh, some images that uh, That look like this for my skybox uh, but I'm assuming it works at runtime, so um, I'm I'm so I've set it up, but it took it takes some time to set it up because uh, just these settings you you pull in um, from the volumetric fog you, you'll put pull in a, an area light here and then uh, on your main camera you'll add this uh, volumetric fog script on here and I had to mess around a lot with just these general settings. Uh, the first thing was the scale. To get something this scale, uh, you have to kind of go at a really small scale. So your camera and and your your area light can't be uh, very different scale. I noticed, you know, it's kind of designed to have your light be be. I don't know if it was designed to be indoor um, or or what. But uh, this is, again, a composition of the built-in fog. So the built-in fog, I have that on uh, to give me kind of the area fog. Um, but then when, and you can't see it in the, uh, in the scene view here, uh, but there's an area light, and I, I had to scale down my forest even uh, to, to get to kind of the same scale. So that was the first uh, step to get to get the fog even showing up so again here's without uh, let this re, redo the anti-aliasing and all that that's without the fog without the built-in fog uh, but then when I add in the built-in fog it gives me kind of the out outside area and I am using a directional light uh, which is does not affect the fog but it does affect the rest of the scene uh, but I, I parented it to the to the area light so that it is going in the same direction. Um, so this again, this is in the game view. This is um, just rotating the camera 
uh, but you can only see it in the game view, you know, this, uh, the actual sun uh, shafts. But this pretty much got to where I wanted it to be. I still have the shadows on uh, all of the trees from the directional light uh, from each other, but then the, uh, the area light, the volumetric fog light, um, gives me the, the sun shafts through the trees. So um, oh, the, other, the other thing was you need this, I'm assuming, because it's in the other scenes, light manager. Uh, it is a prefab that um, uh, you just drag in light manager, fog lights, drag into your scene. So those are the only three things that I used from the, uh, from the asset was that volumetric fog script that goes on the camera, uh, the actual area light itself prefab, um, and then that um, light manager fog lights guide. So when you play it, I mean, it pretty much looks like what, what it looks like in the ga game view. Um, but the cool thing about it, I'm, I'm assuming this, this is real time. I mean, it's used in that Atom video uh, by that VFX team. And so it should work uh, real time. Or I'll, I'll move the camera here so you could see this. This was giving me the exact kind of effect that, that I was looking for. My game is a little bit more cartoony. It's kind of a kid's game. So depending on like how realistic of an effect you need, um, this this may or may not work, but uh, the the settings are really the key. So you c you know between the area light settings, and then the this these are the two ones that you'll mess mess around with. So you you have multiple of these intensity uh, multipliers. Like you have one here on the fog light. You also have an intensity on the area light, uh, which is pretty similar. Not sure it's the same thing uh, but then also on the camera you have a global intensity that you can uh, take up and down that's kind of for the fog density not not really for the light but then this one is for the light the light intensity as well so that this one might might control the same one as uh, on the light but it's more of a global one uh, but yeah, you, you just have tons of settings to, to it's there's going to be a magic number for your scene uh, when it comes to uh, all of these. Uh, so I did find there is uh, ground fog. Let me switch this. Uh, so the ground fog, you, if you fi find the ground fog, you know, you move this up and down until you find where it is. So, okay, there's, there's mine. And then you can take take these and mess around with them until it looks good. So like I said, there are kind of magic numbers for uh, for what's going to look good for your scene. Um, and yeah, so I just messed around with these until it got to a point where I liked it uh, for my scene. Um, I did find if you were doing a real time uh, a real-time situation with this, then <coughs> you can use that, uh, the wind. Um, this is really cool. Uh, they have this little wind prefab that you can drag in and then you put it on <coughs> the volumetric fog script and then you, if you turn up the noise amount and the scale, mess with the scale you want it really small, I guess the and then the amount here, and then on the wind guy you've got a speed, so you can make it animated. Let me move the camera, and that will so that kind of gives you a a nice dancing dancing fog sun shaft type of effect which I thought was pretty rad um, but for, for me I just wanted the uh, this scene as uh, a skybox 
So again, just to kind of finish up that whole skybox thing, because I did find something else uh, cool about it. Um, so you can watch the other video for more info on how to how to create the skybox from from this scene. Um, but pretty much what you do is you'll create a legacy. I'll start over, delete this guy. You'll create a, a legacy skybox using create legacy cube map. Sorry, cube map. Um, and then take it up. I take it up to 2048 and maps and set it readable. Um, not sure if map maps are necessary. If you do want your your guy to be always 2048, um, I, I'm not sure that that really matters. Because uh, if you're compre you know, usually these that would set it if you want to have these compressed. Uh, so then you use that um, render to cube map script that we looked at uh, last time, and that script. I'll show it here, just if you want to write it off of the screen. That's it. So uh, that will take my camera and the cube map, the legacy cube map, and I want to render everything. And the script that I wrote, what it does is it creates a folder in in my assets folder that uh, that has it in it. Let me do a refresh here. Oh, okay. That's the second the second step. So it creates these six. So the problem with these legacy cube maps is that they take six render calls because they have uh, or draw calls because they have the six. So if you read the documentation for the cube map uh, from Unity, they tell you to use one picture one photo texture and uh, import it that way so what i've what i did is i ha found another script that saves a cube map to png and i'll show that here too if i can find it extract cube map from textures it's the same little uh wizard type thing that um you just give it your cube map. So this is the cube map I just rendered out of. And when you click save, uh, it just cre creates that folder based on what it, whatever you call your render cube map. Um, and then right now it's taking those six, uh, those six images, which are kind of embedded in this guy. I, at least I don't know how to get them out of here for other, uh, other than that script. Um, and it creates a folder for that, and it just gives you the images. So these are the six uh, images at 2048 resolution. Um, and then I have a in Photoshop. There's this is this is just a uh, 8K by 6K. You know, so it's in 2048 squares. And I just uh, laid those out. I dragged those in from uh, from here uh, then then I laid them out in the way that unity is uh, expecting them and then I saved this out as it's like a 12 megabyte uh, PNG file and then when you pull that into let me get rid of these so that it doesn't import them so you'll get um, so this is the image that I saved, exported. It's just one image. Um, so when Unity imports that, then it imports it as a texture, right? And you change your texture shape to cube. And I changed the wrap mode to clamp. I haven't had an issue with uh, seams, but I did that and I, left generate mip maps on uh, because I'm assuming that with mip maps it will be able to compress uh, depending on your platform uh, but that gives you the cube map that with you know with your image so 
again, this in this scene, I just pumped everything up. I mean, I had the post-processing uh, all pumped up, the bloom, uh, and aliasing, and the the quality on this scene was just just pumped all the way up. Obviously, this is for mobile, so but I wanted to have the nice looking, uh, a really nice looking uh, skybox. So I'll show. I suppose you already saw in the other scene, but um, just using that on a material, you can create a material and uh, use that cube map. Uh, so I have my skybox material and I have the shader set to skybox cube map. And then I just use that forest skybox, uh, same, same one here as, uh, as that. And then in my scene, I have that material um, for for that. So it, it gives you that cube map as a skybox. And I've got just a little animal that will run around in the forest. My light map's all messed up on the and all that but that's I mean you see in the background you've got got that there again my, my lighting is all messed up in the scene right now so it doesn't look as good as it could because there's no shadows um, but yeah that's the general idea and you can really do this with uh, just about you know, a lot of probably has a lot of different different applications, um, but that's one way to get um, sky or yeah sun shafts into your into your skybox.